All right, everybody. Well, uh, happy Sunday evening to you all. Starting my vlog from a different location today, as you can tell. <laughs> I, uh, just feeling kind of run down. I need to get out and unplug in nature for a day or two. So I waited until the weekend was pretty much over. Uh, tomorrow is a holiday from school. I don't even know what the holiday is. Uh, I just know the kids have got the school day off. And, uh, uh, a lot of the families were out uh, camping this weekend, but they've decided to uh, pack up and go home. Uh, I rolled through here a little bit earlier today, just out killing time on a Sunday, and uh, I checked on the various sites to see what was going to be empty or available uh, for tonight and tomorrow, and my favorite spot right here, number 54, was available. Uh, so I told him, hey, reserve that for me, would you please, pretty please, por favor, and uh, I'll be there late this evening. So here I am, 54, Stephen F. Austin State Park, and uh, this is me for tonight and tomorrow night if I choose to stay. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to do two nights or not, but this is the uh, Hunter's first uh, moto camp outing. Uh, I almost got everything that I wanted in the main bag, uh, but I'm doing hammock camping tonight in my favorite little uh, diamond of trees over there. And I couldn't get my all of my stuff in here because the uh, the overquilt and underquilt are just a little bit too bulky. It's you know basically the size of a sleeping bag uh, and a half, <laughs> so couldn't get everything in there. So I strapped. Uh, uh, another dry bag to the top that's got uh, my kitchen kit and a couple of uh, electronics bits in there so I can record some video and uh, depending on how the coverage is out here I might even do a live stream tonight we'll see anywho I'm gonna get this unpacked and uh, yeah this is that I put my passenger seat uh, backrest uh, on here so I would have a place to uh, tie the the bag against you know give it a backstop and also uh, strap off of it so it wouldn't try to lean forward into me and uh, it's working out quite nice all right carry this over here to the table you all might remember this uh, location from a couple of uh, previous uh, camp outings that i've done i set up uh, right over there with the navi and did the navi's first uh, Moto camp in this exact same spot, parked it right over there for the picture. <laughs> this is my favorite spot, and this is my favorite time when uh, the park is pretty much empty. So I usually come here at the end of a weekend or through the middle of the week when nobody's here. That's the way to do it. Less noise, less chaos, less screaming kids. Okay, uh, make sure I. Got all my stuff off of here, and I'm going to unpack my gear and uh, hook up the hammock in the trees over there. Uh, I've got about, I don't know, not quite an hour of daylight here. Uh, it's fairly overcast, and the sun is setting. It's 5.30-ish, I think. 5-ish. I, I didn't even look at the clock here. What is it? Uh, yeah, 5.20. I was pretty close. So... I've got about an hour to get set up here before it gets too dark. Shouldn't take me that long. Should only take about 20 or 30, maybe. And I'll clean up this uh, table a little bit. Looks like everybody left their food junk all over it. Uh, and I might just sit here and do a live stream tonight if there's sufficient coverage.
Cups. But first, coffee. Okay, breakfast skillet calls for one and a quarter cups of water, so 10 ounces roughly. And always look for the oxygen absorbers because you don't need to eat those. Don't eat the big white mint. Ooh, it's looking spicy. Mmm, it is spicy. I can smell the peppers in it. Oh yeah, that's gonna be good. Add some Louisiana, even better. All right, here we go. 10 ounces. What am I starting at? I am starting at 20 ounces exactly on the dot, so let's uh, take that down to 10. Where's my 10 ounce mark? Twelve. Let's go a touch more. That looks like ten to me. five minutes, ten minutes. In the meanwhile, let that brew for another couple minutes and uh, drain it out into the cup. This is the uh, AeroPress Solo, I think is what they call it, or something like that. The smaller AeroPress. Uh, the bigger one, the original one, is uh, four cup size, but it doesn't come with its own coffee cup. Uh, this one is nice because it all nests right inside there and then there's a little lid that you can put on the top 
but what I've done instead with this is uh, I took the two green cups that normally come with this Stanley kit out and this fits perfectly in there so I can have this as a cook pot and uh, include the AeroPress pretty cool otherwise I've got to carry the AeroPress and a jet boil or something like that so it's just bulkier more stuff all right it's been about three or four minutes long enough for that coffee to really steep in there I'm gonna make sure I get my lid locked down oh it's not one to lock down why not is it my filter I think it's my filter that sucks this filter is too thick well I might be drinking it cowboy style uh, I have a permanent stainless steel filter in here that I use for my other AeroPress but I think the the rim on it is just a bit too thick to allow this locking lid to uh, seal down under the lugs here that's unfortunate I hadn't tried this filter with this until today guess what failure in the field so uh, I think I'm gonna be drinking uh, cowboy style just pour it right in the cup and a little bit of cold water over the top to settle the grains yep that's the plan so normally what you do is you do this of course it's going to drop straight in there uh, but as you press through it filters the coffee and yep and it just dumps so all right when in doubt improvise I just uh, finished off my hot water and I'm going to use this to manually uh, filter the rest of the uh, coffee grains out <laughs> trying to burn my fingers in the process huh yeah, I've used paper filters with this the last several times uh, out, but I thought, oh, no, I need to use that stainless steel filter. Doesn't fit. Hey, it's hot. It's real hot. Oh. Owie. There we go. It's a full cup. And all my coffee grounds down there in the bottom. Don't know if you can see it. Sweet! Little hack worked. Take that over, wash it up in a bit. Meanwhile, it is uh, breakfast time. Adventure skillet time. Let's see what that looks like. Should be about done. It's been oh, good eight minutes, ten minutes. Something like that. Oh, it smells great. Oh man, it smells really good. Stir it up a bit. See if you guys can get in on the action there. Oh, yeah, man. It smells fantastic. Green and red peppers in it. Oh. Mmm. Oh, good. Mmm. It's going to be better. With some Louisiana. Oh, well, yeah. Give it some attitude. Dang, man. I need sharper teeth. Oh, Louisiana. In you go single serve packs. I can't remember where we got these. It was at a restaurant uh, somewhere here locally that has a bunch of these little single serve uh, Louisiana pouches or packets. Fantastic. So much better than carrying a bottle around to break. Not to mention the bottles are too big anyway. Oh, that's going to be good. Throw some pepper in there. I think my pepper got wet. No, it's good. All right. Bon appetit. Oh, yeah. Ooh, hello. That's good. A few moments later. I didn't like it at all. As you can tell. It's good stuff. I like it. Breakfast skillet. Adventure meals from Mountain House. It's good stuff. I have to look around for some more of these. I bought a bunch of that several years back. I mean, look at the dates on these things. 
I don't know if it shows up on camera or not, but best before June 2050. So these freeze-dried meals are amazing, and it's all natural foods. They don't have preservatives. They're fully cooked and uh, fast, freeze-dried and packaged up so they're they're good forever unless they're opened up somehow anyway uh, I bought a bunch of them a while back there was a clearance at uh, Academy Sports and <clears throat> it was just end of season and they were getting rid of everything for like half off I was like are you crazy Cause these things are normally you know six or seven bucks each which you know you'd pay that much at a restaurant but you know, it's not a lot of food for six or seven bucks normally uh, and they had everything for I want to say it was three dollars, three fifty, something like that. I'm like, oh, yeah, I've, I just basically emptied their shelf, <laughs> put it all in a basket, and rolled up front. And uh, I've been using them uh, out of my garage for the last, I don't know, four years or something like that, just slowly. But I'm starting to run out of all my breakfast stuff. I've got plenty of lunch, dinner ones left, but uh, the breakfast ones are all gone. So this is the last one. <laughs> bye bye. So I'll take you all along for a little uh, walk over to the park uh, bathhouse here. They've got several of these throughout the park. This is the one for the tent primitive camping area. And uh, it's a really nice bathhouse. They rebuilt this about, I don't know, three or four years ago, I want to say. About three years ago. And uh, they've got a a men's side uh, that's full length here they've got a women's side on the other end and then on the the shorter sides of it they have uh, family bathrooms uh, <clears throat> unisex whatever you want to call them pretty cool uh, yeah this one's vacant so I can take you in there but all of them have uh, showers uh, it's just a you know, floor drain over there to the side uh, toilet you know they're heated uh, in the winter time, so you've got a, a heater up there. Uh, in the summer, they're just passively cooled. They've got a little vent door down here in the bottom and uh, vent windows that uh, keep everything less than steamy. So, yeah, pretty cool. Nice facilities. Uh, and then here on the back, I was pretty impressed with this. Uh, they've got one of those uh, filtered water stations. That's really cool. I'm presuming it's filtered. Uh, most of the other ones that I've uh, seen are filtered. Uh, like this but it's cold water filtered uh, you can get it out of the tap you know they've got several of the little spigots at each one of the campsites but uh, that's mo better good stuff take you over to the men's room see if it's occupied before I just go recording <laughs> make sure nobody's in here uh, lights are out yeah nobody's in here lights are out it's got auto sensing Hey, bright light. Uh, so, toilet stalls down this side, urinals, of course, you don't need to see that. Uh, there's me. Good morning, all. And uh, down to this end, they've got individual shower stalls, small shower, small shower, and then uh, handicapped. So, uh, nice setup. Very nice park. If you ever want to come and uh, be out in nature, but not really uh, have to do the out in nature thing, uh, does a bear, you know what in the woods, <laughs> you can uh, be a little bit more civilized. All right, so headed back toward my campsite. This is my favorite spot in the park. Uh, I've stayed at several different sites or slips uh, here in the park, but this one's definitely hands down my favorite. Uh, campsite number 54 and uh, the reason I like it is that arrangement of trees back there. They're set up in a perfect diamond formation uh, with just the right width for hammock camping. And here's the hunter. Uh, I've stayed at a few over there. In fact, uh, almost straight through the other side over there is where I brought the cub for its first uh, moto camping adventure three or four years ago. And uh, <clears throat> I was overlooking this site, but someone was already in it, and I was like, oh man, they got my site. <laughs> anyway, this is, uh, this is camp. This is my usual setup here, plus or minus a few pieces. I change things out a little bit. Uh, one tactic that I've adopted over the years, especially in the fall season when uh, temperatures are a little bit variable, you know, daytime is nice, you know, 70s, something like that, but nighttime gets much cooler. 
uh, and I need insulation and stuff like that with the under quilt and over quilt and all that, I bring a second hammock. Uh, and that's what I call my day hammock or my sitting hammock. Uh, and this one is a uh, an Eno, uh, Eagle's Nest Outfitters uh, Sub 7. Let's see if I can find the little... Oh, where'd you go? Oh, where'd you go? There it is. Oh, yep, there it is. So this is the Eno Sub 7. And they don't sell this particular model anymore, I don't think. Um, they've got a successor to this that's called the Super Sub, which is a larger hammock. It's longer uh, and a little bit wider, and it only weighs like one ounce more. So <clears throat> I also have the Super Sub, but I like this one because it's real small. Uh, I've already got it all set up. I made a, a UCR ridge line up here uh, and added the uh, Eno, I think they call it the Talon, yeah, Eno Talon uh, little stuff sack, you know, holder and all that. And uh, when I pair all this up with the uh, Eno straps, uh, these are the Helios. Sorry, trying to keep you on camera. Oh, focus. There it goes. A Helios straps. These are a little thin by today's standards. You're supposed to have two inch tree straps uh, for most parks, but you know, this thing is such a light setup, and I'm not a heavy guy. I don't really mind too much about using these one inch straps. But anyway, all of this together with all the stuff sacks, with the ridgeline organizer, everything weighs like nine and a half ounces. It's crazy light. So I can smash that down and shove it in my uh, dry bags or whatever, and it doesn't take up hardly any space at all. And it gives me all this extra seating area uh, for daytime. So I'll just stretch out in this and, uh, you know, nighttime I use it to hold my helmet and my gloves and jacket and all that stuff off the bike, uh, keep it off the ground. But, um, uh, it's better to have something like this that's open for the nice daytime temperatures than being crammed into your sleeping hammock with all the insulation and everything. So very quickly on that one, that is the, uh, get over here and show you the logos. That is the Kamek Mantis. Uh, it is not the ultralight Mantis, it's just the regular Mantis. Uh, the price difference was like 150 bucks. Uh, anyway, so this is the Kamek Mantis. Uh, I've used this several times. I really like this hammock. It's very moto camping friendly. Uh, it packs down very small, uh, smaller than a football. Uh, the tarp that comes with it is, it's okay. Uh, the problem I've had with it in the past are the line locks letting go. Uh, so it takes a little focus. It takes a little adaptation in uh, how you rig these lines. Um, I don't know if it was just education on my part. I've never had to do this in the past with line locks, so I had to figure it out. But anyway, uh, how you lock these guys out is you tighten it. This is not going to hold real strongly. I'm trying to get the camera to focus. That is not going to hold real tight. And if you get into any wind, uh, the tarp getting yanked around is going to slacken real fast. And if that happens in a rainstorm, you end up getting very wet. Ask me how I know. <laughs> Oh, getting soggy. This might not be such a good uh, idea. Oh, it's running in. Wow, where's it coming from? Oh no, that's bad, bad news. It looks like my uh, my tarp has uh, shifted. That's what's going on. Yeah, yeah, I'm so, so, so. So we're gonna have to fix this pronto. Yuck. <laughs> yeah, the tarp pulled, so everything down there is soaking wet now. <laughs> so what you do is you take your tag end, uh, your loose end, and you feed it back up through this eyelet. If I can get it to focus, there we go. You feed it back up through the eyelet, do a half hitch, and come back across the uh, adjuster block here to lock off that slack. And then do it a couple times with some uh, half hitches, twists, and pull. And uh, that'll keep that thing locked in place. And it, it works a little better that way. But anyway, back to the, the hammock, <clears throat> or the tarp rather. It doesn't provide a lot of extra coverage on the ends. It's uh, it, it could use to another 18 or 24 inches of length, about another foot, foot and a half, something like that, at least, uh, to give you a little bit better coverage on both ends. But otherwise, it does well. Uh, the hammock is fantastic. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Uh, and then inside here, I've got Kamek's uh, inflatable light tubes. Uh, I use those in the evenings uh, just for some ambient light or reading or uh, you know campsite lighting whatever and they have magnets uh, in them you can see we're reading through uh, they have magnets in them four magnets uh, 
in the, the light tube strip, so I just use some fender washers. Uh, you can't use stainless because stainless isn't ferrous enough to grab the magnets, but uh, just regular, you know, galvanized zinc or whatever, uh, and just put those on the back side of the tarp, and boink, you got, uh, you got area lighting. It's pretty cool. My quilt system, I'm using the uh, Sierra Madre Inferno, uh, and that it's a little warm for these temperatures, uh, but it does well overall. Uh, this is a 30 degree sleep system and it's uh, power down so it's actual uh, goose down inside there really good it packs down super small uh, but it's pricey <laughs> this this isn't budget friendly stuff that set uh, the inferno under quilt and the inferno top quilt that's inside 30 degree as well uh, I think just that those two pieces were close to 700 bucks <laughs> it's not budget friendly the rest of it's all very budget friendly uh the kamek mantis is like 249 for the whole setup uh you know my rei camp chair over here is uh 70 bucks or something like that with the under quilt it wasn't very much uh a little folding table from uh, amazon i think that was 29 bucks or something cheap uh the sub seven I want to say it was 79 bucks, uh, something like that. And then with the ridge line and, you know, the talon straps and all that, it might be 100 bucks, 125, I think, is what I've got in that. So, yeah, anyway. Most of this is uh, budget friendly. The, uh, <laughs> the quilt system's not so budget friendly. They get pricey fast. Uh, you, can, you can spend as much or as little as you want, but uh, you don't have to go super crazy expensive to have fun. Anyway, it's day hammock time for me. I'm going to lounge and read. All right, everybody, welcome to the afternoon. It's uh, about 2.40, something like that in the afternoon, and uh, starting to get a little hungry. I had my breakfast, but uh, you know, it's afternoon, so it's time for some more freeze-dried meals. <laughs> uh, Mountain House freeze-dried pasta primavera, but uh, I spiced that up. Uh, there's no meat or anything in this. It's just, uh, it's all, you know, vegan, vegetarian, whatever. Uh, so I uh, hit it with a little bit of flavor in the way of some uh, canned chicken breast. Uh, I just dropped this whole thing in there with the, the juice, uh, so I reduced the amount of water uh, that I boil up by a little bit, you know, because that's got some extra moisture to it. So uh, this calls for two cups of boiling water, so I'm going to get that started. About 14 ounces of water. Hook up the... Uh, propane butane tank and away we go see if I can lose the hair on my hands Here we go heat that up don't really need the windshield this morning or the uh, this afternoon because it's not as cold as it was this morning but these do help to uh, focus the heat in on your uh, pot a little bit better speeds up the boiling time, usually. Let that go for a few minutes. And I'll be adding that to the package momentitos. Okay, water's a full rolling boil. Let's crack this open and uh, Fill it up. Mmm, it smells good. Mmm. Take the oxygen absorber out of there. And uh, that's what it looks like before all the goodies and the boiling water. Mmm, that smells good. So it's gonna be pasta chicken primavera when I'm done with this. Oh wait, let's add the chicken first, shall we? tab top so no need for uh, no need for a can opener oh I lost a piece of chicken oh oh yeah that's a full bag there we go Bert's gonna have it uh, yeah so good stuff made a mess on the table have to wash that off with some uh, water here in a moment And that's about right. And I'll use 
a little bit of extra boiling water I have here, dilute that. Fewer ants. <laughs> All right, seal this up and uh, let it sit for about, I don't know, 10 minutes. Okay. It's been about 10 minutes or so, 10 or 12 minutes. I'm sure it is uh, well rehydrated. Try not to destroy the bag. There we go. Oh yeah. I like mine a little bit soupy because uh, I like keeping all that uh, chicken broth or juice that it came in. So I don't know if you can see in the bag. Hopefully you can. I dare not tip it any further or it's gonna spell out. Uh, anyway, I usually carry a little bag of uh, condiments and spices and stuff with me and I have some uh, pizza cheese here some <laughs> grated Parmesan salt and pepper and Louisiana so first I'm gonna add the uh, Parmesan for sure uh, it's always good with this kind of pasta and if I want to spice it up a bit or if I need more salt or pepper then uh, I've got that at my disposal my other bag that I carry is my uh, my drinking bag <laughs> I've got uh, beer salt flavored beer salt uh, lemon lime and another one that's uh, just lime uh, it's the twang brand this stuff is really good just as seasoning salts on anything food or beer or whatever you want uh, and then in this little uh, split container here I've got salt and uh, pepper so anyway probably won't need that today now this is a pretty hearty meal for one person uh, it's supposed to be 2.5 servings on this package uh, you can see here 2.5 servings. I think that comes out on camera uh, And then the can of chicken breast is you know four servings quote-unquote uh, But all told this is about 910 calories and 100 grams of protein, so it works out pretty well. This is a, it's a good meal It'll carry me through the night for sure Okay, then that's enough of that. Use my long-handled uh, vault can titanium spork here to stir up the goodies and get in there. Oh yeah. Oh, that looks good. All right, y'all. I'll try not to drip on the table here, but uh, there is. Uh, oops, let's get it back this way. Maybe you can see it better. Uh, that's uh, very tasty. Let's see if it needs any spice. No, it's perfect, just like it is. Action pack. Doesn't need salt, doesn't need anything. I might hit it with Louisiana, but good stuff. Bon appetit. morning all. It's the second morning. Uh, Tuesday morning, I guess this is. It was so nice here yesterday, I just couldn't uh, couldn't bring myself to leave, so I stayed another night. <laughs> anyway, it is uh, coffee time. I don't have any more uh, of my freeze-dried food. I didn't bring uh, two days worth of food. I just brought one day, so I'm going to do my coffee, start packing up my uh, tent gear over there, and uh, you know, head out in about an hour or so. It's about 7.30 right now. The sun is not quite up yet. It seems like it might be a little bit overcast, but it still feels good out here. Uh, it didn't get as cold last night as it did the first night. Uh, first night it was down in the low 50s, like 52, 53. Um, last night it got down to uh, 62 or 64, somewhere in that range. It's uh, about 10 degrees warmer than it was the first day. That's okay. I'll be 
be doing a cowboy coffee style this morning. Um, that's plenty of water. Coffee grounds out of here. Yeah, I'll just make it super strong today. Why not? That's about good enough. Eh, why not? Ah, it's gonna be strong. That'll wake me up. Oh, that's going to be some stout to coffee. Alright, so, let that go. Bring it up to a gentle rolling boil. And, uh, and let it sit there for a minute. And uh, the trick to getting all the coffee grounds to kind of settle to the bottom so you're not drinking them is uh, pour a little bit of cold water slowly along the top and the cold water will sink and drag the coffee grounds down with it. Old trick, real old trick, <laughs> way older than I am. Uh, and then from that I'll just use the little uh, strainer lid in the top of the uh, Stanley cup here and pour some coffee off into my cup and good to go. I would be using the AeroPress this morning but uh, that permanent filter that I've got does not uh, allow the bottom of it to seat properly. Okay, I'll get a different filter. Okay, it's just about that time. The coffee is starting to bubble and foam up a bit. It's not quite up to a boil. It's getting close. The trick is catching it before it boils because when it boils it just flies. <laughs> <laughs> it foams over, makes a mess everywhere. And that is that. I'll get this out of there without burning my fingers. Yep. Yep, there's coffee. All right, shut her down. One last stir to get the coffee grounds off the sides and That sit there a minute and I'll pour some uh, cold water over the top of it and it's time to drink and then I've got the uh, task of tearing down all the uh, camping gear behind us over there I'll swing the camera around in a minute and uh, let you guys watch me put things away it always takes a little bit longer to pack up than it does to deploy because uh, you gotta cram stuff into the stuff sacks and all that it's easier than just yanking it out of there. So, setup usually takes me about 15 to 20 minutes for camp. Uh, packing it up usually takes about a half hour, roughly. So it's almost twice the length of time to pack it up and get everything smashed back in the bags the way that it came out. <clears throat> All right, that ought to do. Pour a little bit of cold water over the top, make the grounds disappear to the bottom, <laughs> like magic. All right, it's coffee time. Dripped on the table a little bit, but there's uh, Morning Joe. Oh yeah, it came out just perfect. Salud. Okay, it's time to wash up my dishes uh, before I put them away. So I have one of these little uh, nylon cloths uh, scrubbers. These are great because they dry out real fast. Uh, this one I got off Amazon. It's called uh, Lunatech dishcloth. Uh, they come in a, it's 
a three pack or a six pack, I can't remember. And then uh, I use uh, Camp Suds Biodegradable Soap. Easy enough. Coffee grounds, biodegradable. Let's feed the ground, shall we? There we go. This uh, campground, in particular, these sites over here uh, have water, no power. So they're not full RV sites. They're just uh, minimal services. Uh, but having the water right here is nice. So I don't have to go down to one of the uh, restrooms or bath station or whatever to uh, get water and tote it back here in a container. That's why I like this particular site because it's got everything I need. I don't need power, I just need water. sat around long enough. Time to pack it up and go home. Kind of intentionally waiting a bit uh, to see if the sun was going to come out and help burn off some of the uh, condensation on the carts and all that but uh, it's not getting any brighter today's going to be full overcast like this and we're supposed to have some rain in the afternoon starting around three so this is it Super light hammocks are very thin nylon, so I don't like letting it hit the ground in case it gets snagged by something. So, because these things are so thin, I just uh, fold them in half and uh, get them right into their little included stuff sack. Don't let it hit the ground because uh, I had one get snagged pretty badly. There's the bad. Uh, stuff sack. Uh, oh, see? No, that's the other thing. This just rolls up and shoves in there. The whole thing fits in this tiny little bag. It's crazy. Even my stuff sack and everything else I can get shoved down into this uh, tiny little bag here. I don't know if I'm even keeping you on camera. You just wad it up and throw it in there. It compresses down and stays out of your way. Your uh, hooks on the outside. We need to leave the Helios bag out. Uh, you leave your two hooks hanging out so you can uh, redeploy later.
top quilt that I didn't show in the previous video, uh, but uh, it's fun to shove these things down into their tiny little stuff sack. They compress really well, but it takes a little bit of doing to get them in there because they're slippery. Anyway, I don't know if that shows up on camera. Inferno. Good stuff. No, and I don't have a table for staging and crushing everything back into their little stuff sacks. Uh, I do it in the hammock, uh, and I use the hammock as kind of a uh, press board uh, to roll things up and get the air out of them and shove them back in the bags and all that. Uh, and if the weather is uh, poor, you know, raining or whatever, uh, I leave the tarp up and I take the tarp down last uh, so I can stay underneath it. Got it all. Now it's just a matter of uh, folding things up, shoving them in the bags, and uh, making it all fit. Okay, now the fun part. Uh, everything's been uh, shoved back into its uh, stuff sacks and compression bags, and all of this has to fit in there. <laughs> and it does, just barely, but uh, it takes a little uh, negotiating the space to get it to behave itself. Uh, that goes in the bottom lengthwise, just fits. Uh, then I put the under quilt, over quilt uh, in there toward the bottom, and then all the other pieces, uh, including that one's on the bottom, but all the other pieces just kind of nestle in and uh, they work. So it all fits. That's a 38 liter dry bag and it holds an entire camp, no problem. With some room to spare actually, uh, because these are squishy and compressible. So wish me luck. Okay, there it is. Only took about one minute. Uh, I would have brought you along for the ride, but uh, I don't have a chest rig to show you. But uh, it's all in there. Everything's uh, in the bag. My total loadout, uh, I didn't weigh this, but I'm guessing about uh, 16 to 18 pounds. It's not very heavy. All that's very lightweight stuff. It just takes up a lot of space. So, And then my uh, kitchen kit, uh, just the little burner and uh, butane cartridge and all that. Uh, they're in that little top bag there with a battery pack that I was using to charge my phone and that's pretty much it. So, time to strap it on the bike. All right. Well, got everything packed up. Did my last walk through the uh, campsite over there. I made sure I didn't leave any ropes or cables or ties or stakes or uh, trash or anything behind. I uh, got it all packed up and on the bike, just the way it got here. No muss, no fuss. And uh, now I'm going to head out. And it's starting to drizzle a bit. Uh, I don't even know if my camera lens is wet, but I might have a little bit of a soggy ride home because uh, I didn't bring any rain gear. <laughs> When I left the house, uh, the forecast was uh, sunny and clear for uh, several days, but now it has changed, typical for the Gulf Coast, so uh, I might get a little wet on the way home. We'll see. So, 
So it was a good two-day outing. I was only originally intending to stay for one, but it was so nice I just couldn't couldn't bear to leave. Well, today is a good day to leave, unless I was going to stay for a week, you know. But once the rain starts coming, you want to be set. <laughs> you don't want to be uh, packing up and moving and uh, all that when it's uh, raining out because it's just unpleasant, you know being all soggy and wet and no way to get dry uh, and of course you're putting your gear away wet which is suboptimal maintenance and care of the gear uh, whenever you get home from one of these trips you should always open it up and let it air out uh, especially if it's wet like you know, this morning where there's a lot of humidity and you've got the morning dew and condensation on everything uh, you don't want to leave that bottled up tight in the stuff sacks because uh, it can cause mold and mildew and yuck yuck so usually what I do is when I get home after I decompress for a few minutes or an hour or two or whatever I go back out and uh, unload the bike and take everything out of the roll bags because the roll bags themselves can also retain a lot of moisture inside because remember they are waterproof inside and out so whatever moisture is in there hey got a deer uh, whatever moisture is in there stays in there so open that up take everything out and uh, stretch out the tent hammock tarp whatever you've got let it air dry in the garage or somewhere safe uh, and then go back you know a day later something like that and repack them shove them back in now under quilts and over quilts and things like that uh, even sleeping bags uh, you should store them uncompressed uh, it's better on the fibers it's better for the insulation uh, particularly with goose down the constant tight compression eventually crushes all the feathers and stuff like that to where they don't provide as much warmth uh, synthetics are usually not as bad about it they're pretty resilient uh, you know, polyester fibers and stuff like that so uh, they can withstand being compressed for longer periods of time but it's still a good idea to store them open and loose uh, to prevent permanent uh, compression issues so farewell Stephen F. Austin uh, it was another fantastic uh, fantastic stay weather the last three or four days has just been fantastic hey bird and stop here and fill up. Probably have to go back out for a work appointment, so I might as well have it full and ready to ride. Okay then. Fill it up, see what it gets. Uh, 865, 2.6 gallons, yeah? It's right up there to the top of the splash plate, so we'll leave it there. Hmm. Ready to get home, take a shower. Three days, no shower. It's about right. So trip F was, I didn't say it, like, say, I'll have to go back on the video. Anyway, 212 on this trip, 1037 total miles, don't fight me wind, don't fight me wind, ah. right as I'm about to take a picture, every time the wind blows. was 212 on trip A. Okay. Reset. Thank you. Trip B is my uh, oil change, so 743 miles since the oil change. Alrighty then, off we go. <laughs> These tires still look so new, they got whiskers all over them. I'm not really uh, scrubbing them in corners or doing anything crazy.
a little slippery. I don't know if I trust them in hard, fast corners. All right, everybody. Well, thanks for joining in uh, for the Hunter's first moto camp adventure. Not a long one, but uh, this was a, a test to see if I could uh, load up what I wanted on the back of the bike and uh, get out for a few day moto camp and uh, it worked without even uh, all my proper uh, panniers. Are you gonna howl? Oh, oh, oh. You gonna howl? Huh? Huh? Oh, good girl. <laughs> I'll catch y'all later. How have you been? <laughs>